Hello everyone, welcome back to another Watchpoint episode and today we're going to talk about subjects a little bit difficult for me, uh, printf debugging, right, um, logging. And, uh, you know, I have to say sometimes it, it is uh, the answer. Um, usually I think it's the wrong answer, uh, but sometimes it's, well, it's our only answer, okay? So I think the time for printf style debugging is when all the other tools have let you down and for whatever reason you can't use them. It might be uh, because you know this thing has, happens a few times a month in production and you can't afford to be running those tools all the time. It might be because you're in an environment where it's a very limited constrained environment and you can't run the tools. It might be, um, you know, whatever reason they just they just they just let you down. One might be actually because um, I've got a race condition or some kind of timing problem, and when I run my my test case in the tooling, no matter what I do. Uh, it just won't reproduce. I can't reproduce the problem inside the tooling. This can happen in, say, with RR trying to get a trace or, or an undo recording. Now, RR has a thing called chaos mode, which makes that much, like, much, like, much less likely to happen. Undo has a thing called thread fuzzing, uh, which is kind of the same idea and um, a slightly different take on it, but a similar kind of principle. And basically means that, in my experience, um, more often than not, actually you can reproduce your race condition inside recording, and then it becomes quite almost trivial to uh, to debug but sometimes nonetheless there are times when uh, when it won't and um, and then we're kind of just left with we're just left with printf and I did a I wrote an article a couple of months ago on how to debug race conditions and uh, I asked a bunch of people who I you know, really respect what do they do and I was kind of surprised with how little came back right it, kind of variations on the on the theme of one of the responses I got was uh, uh, coffee and printfs and swearing um, and um, yeah, there's just kind of not a lot out there. Uh, and and uh, even when it comes to kind of, you know, to print FD debugging. But so this cartoon I'm showing here, this is the famous uh, XK, well, well-known XKCD cartoon, and they're goofing off because their code's compiling, right? Well, why is their code compiling? Well, uh, I reckon because their printf's compiling, right? They've added a printf. I'd love to know what proportion of manually triggered builds like outside CI and everything, what proportion of manually triggered builds are being done because a programmer has added a printf, some kind of print statement, because they're debugging and they're re... I, I reckon it's like definitely most, like 90% or something, I reckon. Um, and I think it's just, you know, it's often people's first resort and it just shouldn't be. It should be the last resort. But nonetheless, in the last resort, sometimes you need it. So what, uh, what do we do? So I started looking around. So I mean, obviously we can just do regular printf or see out. Um, straight to standard out. That's pretty naive, and particularly if we're looking for a race condition or something, you know, no one does. You know, it doesn't take long to work out. That's not a good idea. We can printf to a file um, or um, in memory, um, and and so you know, because you can get printf by default. Actually, if you go to a file, it will be buffered, and and so it's reasonably efficient. Um, um, but there's, it's still quite, it's still relatively slow. I timed it at sort of uh, eighty to one hundred nanoseconds for uh, an in memory um, uh, buffered printf. And um, uh, and that's the single-threaded case. Multi-threaded case gets much worse. And worse than that, um, worse than just the time it takes, is that uh, if you just do regular printf or see out, it will take a lock, a big sort of mutex inside libc. Um, and so that kind of imposes this kind of um, synchronization points, right? Um, and so it yeah, slows things down, but worse, it, it, it changes the scheduling in, in a way that can, can really make it super hard because you add these print statements and then the thing, the race conditions kind of moving around underneath you. So we'll kind of look, look out there and what is there, we'll just look at like what's available that will, um, uh, what's available that can do better than a regular printf. And there's a library that seems to be quite well used called speedlog, spdlog, I'm not sure the best way to pronounce it. And um, it's it's uh, uh, it's here on. Uh, you can find it very easily. You just go to GitHub, and I can go uh, speed log, and it's going to be the top uh, the top hit that we get here. There's a few things kind of based on it. So let's let's take a look at this. Let's get the code. Uh, copy that. Let's uh, get uh, uh, so git clone that and. Um, uh, so if I go into here, so um, there's build instructions uh, on the GitHub. Uh, re Why did that happen? Anyway, sorry about that. So let's go uh, like that. No, because ugh, I've already done that bit. Right, make a territory called build, and then we're just going to do it's just a CMake thing. Here we go. So um, that's going to. Um, 
build speed log and a bunch of um, sort of ancillary things and example things. Um, I was going to do some examples. Uh, it's kind of slow. Okay, here it comes. Patient. Uh, all things come to those who wait. There we go. Um, one of the nice things it does there is gives me a nice uh, example program that it builds and we can see what that looks like. So here's what speed lock looks like. So it's pretty nice. So it's got lots of formatting things, it's got these different levels, info warning critical and debug, timestamps, um, all good stuff. It has this, this um, if you just do regular logs, then it just come out at standard out. Obviously I could redirect that, but um, it has uh, uh, this notion of backtrace, which I think is kind of strangely named in my opinion, because a back, I always think of a backtrace as, you know, it's, it's the list of the function call tree, right? So who called me and my caller's caller and its caller and its caller. That's usually what I think of as a backtrace. Speed log seems to call backtrace, what it means by backtrace is this in memory logging. I just log to a buffer and then I can dump that buffer at the end. So with this little example program, it makes a backtrace backlog of 10 messages. It emits 100 of them. And so what you get is the final 10. So that's probably what we want. Uh, that sounds like good, good in memory logging and then I'm going to dump it at the end. So uh, I timed that on my system as running at about like 80 nanoseconds for a single in memory log message, which I thought was kind of slow, actually not really much faster than printf, but buffered printf. And uh, uh, and also just like with libc, it, it takes a lock. There's a mutex here. So um, that's, it. that's with a single threaded case. If I have multiple threads hammering away or, or logging, I, I found each one took on average of sort of uh, three to 400 nanoseconds. Um, so, so that was disappointing. So I thought, well, can we do something just like much simpler that gets what we want? And so, uh, yeah, we can. So I made a thing along with a, a good friend of mine, uh, Aditya, we made a thing called uh, L3, which is the lightweight logging uh, library. So it's up on GitHub, you can, um, you can get it. Um, um, and um, uh, this, let me show you what this looks like. So it's it's a little bit different than regular um, logging, but this I think it's got some big um, advantages. So if I make a little, well, I've got this little test um, program. Uh, that's not what I want uh, here, um, which I have, need to set L3 in it, and it'll give me a, a logging file to use. Let's get rid of these, and uh, and then I'm just going to log like like this. So I'm going to use printf style, C, C printf style formatting. Um, now it's a little bit limited. Actually, this new line's not needed. Let's get rid of that. Um, in that you can only have uh, two uh, up to two arguments. Um, that's for performance reasons. It's pretty easy to hack this to make it more if you want. But um, fixed sized buffers are the key here to make it super fast and very unintrusive and critically lock free. So let me just let's just have a look at what that looks like. So if I run that, um, I just need to give it the include directory, and that's my test program. And I just need to link against L3.c. Now there is an assembly version that's even faster. Um, I'm just going to show you the C version today, keep things simple. Um, and I run that, and um, yeah, no output, right? Because of course it's it's gone to uh, it's gone to this temp output thing. So I need to post process. I can't just if I just look at that temp output, we're going to see uh, it is a binary file. So um, I post process it. Now I know this is a, uh, uh, some people have strong views on this, but I think there's uh, there's a good reason um, for this, which I'll get to. So um, we've got this L3 dump, um, which is a bit of Python that post processes it. So um, I give it the um, I give it the log file, uh, which was uh, temp output, and I, I need to give it the binary that is the executable that generated that, and um, and then I get my output, nice and simple. It's prefixed with the thread ID because um, it's kind of aimed at debugging these race conditions so I can see what thread did what. Now, the reason for doing this is, and I'll show you just the code in a moment, the reason for doing this is because it makes it super fast. So uh, under 10, I get eight nanoseconds um, for the C version on uh, on my machine for single threaded, down to two nanoseconds for the assembly version. Um, and um, at least if it's single threaded, and it goes up to sort of 30 odd if it's uh, multi-threaded. Um, and critically, it's lock-free, right? So it's super fast and lock-free. Um, and the way it works is very simple. Um, so, uh, you know, you could just re-implement this yourself if for some reason this doesn't kind of suit you. Um, so let's look at, uh, let's look at that. I've already got that, oh no, I don't. Um, so, um, so this is actually the, uh, although it's called L3, okay, it gets hash defined to this L3M map underneath. 
Um, and it's this is it, right? This is the entirety of the logging function. So it does this sync, fetch, and add. Now that's an atomic increment of the index of the log file, so it gets a new slot. It's just an array, right? The log is just an array. Um, and then it writes in, writes in the TID, we saw that, potentially some lock information. We're gonna talk about that now. And the message, or oh, it pointed to the message and, and some arguments. And this is just, this just goes into this, this memory structure here, which is, um, uh, my, my L3 init um, here. So that is just, get some less nice here. So it's just an M map, right? So this is just an M map with map shared. And so all I'm doing in it, then it's just a big array, M mapped with a file back. And I just write, every time I call L3 log, it just increments the index and writes into the one slot. So lock free, super fast. And, and nicely, because it's M mapped, map shared, um, if my program crashes, um, you know, or even just killed with SIG kill or something, then I'm guaranteed that all those logs that have completed will have hit the underlying store, um, would have able to hit that file. So it's kind of lossless as well as being fast and lock three. Um, and that's it, like it's it's super simple. It's a little bit fiddly um, getting the, um, the, the, the the post-processing codes. I'm not gonna show you that, um, but it's, it's pretty straightforward, um, pretty straightforward concept at least. Um, the only thing just to be aware of is in my uh, test um, program, um, uh, I, they, it has to be a string literal like this, right? I couldn't go um, like, um, um, so if I got like, you know, if this was like a char star, uh, I, I can't I can't do that. Okay, it's gotta be a string literal because the post-processing tool will do a find the string literals which are embedded in the executable. Um, but all this stuffed in the log that hits the file system is a pointer but I can map that pointer back to the uh, the executable um, from the uh, from that post-processing step. Um, so that's that's how it gets to be super fast and lock free and and unintrusive. Um, right, that's it about L3. We've got some more about talk about um, uh, how to get line of code um, source line um, where those statements come from in a very efficient way in a follow up talk. Um, hopefully this helps you. Um, you know, hopefully you turn to other tools first, but you know, it does happen when you need to resort to, uh, to printf style debugging. Hopefully this is a good option. Maybe there's something else out there that I missed. I mean, this isn't very complicated, so I was kind of surprised not to find anything like this out there. I suspect it's been implemented hundreds of times. Um, um, so if you know of that, please you know, let me know in the comments. Um, and otherwise I'll see you next time.